Hello and welcome to Global Health TV and the second of our shows from the American Diabetes Association 82nd Scientific Sessions in New Orleans, the world's largest scientific meeting focusing purely on diabetes. In today's show, Dame Frances Ashcroft, winner of the 2022 ADA Banting Medal, discusses her influential work in neonatal diabetes and her hopes for future research developments. That might reduce the progressive decline in the pancreatic beta cell function uh, during the course of diabetes. But first, Dr. Nader Razuli, Professor of Medicine at University of Colorado, discusses the importance of individual care and innovations in how patients with diabetes and additional diseases are treated. And so today we're just talking a little bit about, you know, some of the newer things that have been discussed here at the meeting with cardiovascular disease and chronic kidney disease. Uh, give us an update on what some of the latest talk is. Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, we all know as diabetologists, cardiovascular disease and uh, chronic kidney disease are major comorbidities of diabetes. And about 30% of, uh, at least 30% of uh, patients with type 2 diabetes develop these uh, complications of diabetes. So how we optimally treat them, it's very important. And what has happened more recently is um, more individualized care for uh, patients with diabetes or people with diabetes. And what it translates to clinical practice is, are there are certain glucose lowering medication that they have cardioprotective or uh, ren uh, renal protective effect. So the trials uh, that showed specifically SGLT2 inhibitor like empagliflozin or dapagliflozin can protect people from uh, a cardiac event or uh, renal uh, progression uh, was kind of released a few months ago. But also we have a new class of a medication, non-steroidal mineral corticoid receptor antagonists, uh, specifically phenerenone, that can also uh, prevent uh, progression of kidney disease or a hospitalization for heart failure and cardiovascular mortality. So now we have different tools to use in patients with uh, diabetes and heart failure or uh, chronic kidney disease. And, and that's been a theme in a lot of our conversations about more individualized care and really speaking to each patient's needs. Exactly. So, I mean, the future is precision medicine. The future is uh, targeting individualized treatment for patients. And not everybody with diabetes has this complication, but at least now we know people with diabetes who have heart failure, heart failure or diabetes kidney disease, they benefit from certain glucose lowering medications. So personalizing treatment, that's our goal and should happen. But we need, as I gave a talk uh, on Friday at ADA, we need all hands on deck. We all need to work together in a multidisciplinary manner to optimize diabetes care. And so we talked about these new medications. Uh, what would be some of the other guidelines in really mitigating the cardiovascular disease? What has happened in the past couple of years, now we have given priority to this certain glucose lowering medication that they have a cardiorenal uh, protection effect at the same time. So if a patient has diabetes and uh, heart failure, or uh, diabetes and chronic kidney disease, now the first line of therapy is one of this medication, independent of glycemic controls. So really looking at the whole person and trying to attack Perfect. from different angles. Exactly. And so we also have been hearing about terzepatides and semaglutides and uh, how they're having an effect on the fight against obesity. Sure, these are the uh, medications. Semaglutide is a GLP-1 receptor uh, agonist that was shown through SERPAS program uh, and a STEP program. It has, uh, I mean, the efficacy on glucose lowering and weight loss is great. But we were super excited about uh, terzepatide where Sermount trial, it was uh, presented in the uh, room with a lot of excitement showed in average terzepatide uh, weight loss in people without diabetes just as a treatment of obesity was about 
23%, 22%. There is a shift right now that maybe uh, treatment of obesity should be priority over treatment of uh, glucose, or so rather than looking at management of diabetes on a glucocentric approach, we need to focus on more what is the problem, and that is obesity. And I'm sure that discussion is going to continue on. Well, thank exactly. you so much, Dr. Zoui, sure. for joining us. Yeah, it was I, uh, <laughs> my pleasure. I've been extremely fortunate in that the work that I've been doing as a basic scientist uh, together with my team has um, eventually impacted the lives of patients with neonatal diabetes. And this is the result of many, many teams working together, but in particular a collaboration with Professor Andrew Hattersley. Uh, I have been working on the ATP sensitive potassium channel for many years and we discovered that that plays a key role in the regulation of insulin secretion. Andrew found that mutations in this channel are associated with neonatal diabetes, and then we showed that these mutations are in fact um, pathogenic and impair the ability of the KATP channel to be regulated by glucose, and consequently impact on insulin secretion, which accounts for the diabetes. And the most wonderful thing is that the channels still retain their sensitivity to sulfonylurea drugs. So patients who had been treated with insulin were able to switch to sulfonylurea therapy. And that's had a positive impact on their lives and also on their clinical condition. Once you get um, stuck into a topic, you're never going to leave it because there's always many, many more questions to ask. I think diabetes in particular because... It's a very interesting condition and when I first set up my own lab there were many people in Oxford who were working on the basic physiology or biochemistry of insulin secretion and there were also many people working um, on the clinical side of diabetes. We're really excited about what we're doing at the moment and the reason is that we're very interested in the effects of high blood sugar on the ability of the pancreatic beta cells to secrete insulin. And what we've recently found is that hyperglycemia causes a, a decline in the function of the beta cell. And we've um, shown that one of the things it does is to impair mitochondrial metabolism and consequently insulin secretion. We're now trying to understand precisely how it does this, what's going on. We know that it isn't glucose, but it, that it's a glucose metabolite. And therefore that may possibly bring new targets for diabetes therapy that might, that might reduce the progressive decline in the pancreatic beta cell function uh, during the course of diabetes. But time will tell. We'll have to see. That's all for this show. You can find more of our coverage of ADA here and more from Global Health TV on our website or YouTube channel. So until next time, it's goodbye.